older brothers. And he was thrown into a pit and then sold into slavery. Poor Joseph. That story left me so sad. I was sad all week, wondering what happened to Joseph. What about you? Did that story leave you sad too? Now, if you didn't get to watch that story about Joseph, or even the beginning of the story about Joseph, you can look in the description below, and I have linked those stories for you. So you can watch those videos, so you can learn more about Joseph, the beginning of the story. All right, so what happens to Joseph next? Well, now Joseph is a slave. Oh my goodness. Joseph is no longer the beloved son of a favorite father. Oh, how sad. He no longer has his beautiful coat of many colors. He's a slave in a land that doesn't know his God. And I wonder, will Joseph still love his God and be faithful to God, even in a land where no one is watching, where no one cares about his God? We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so Joseph is sold to a man named Potiphar in the land of Egypt, which is far, far away from his home in Canaan. He traveled many miles on foot to get to Egypt. So Potiphar is a rich man, and he works for the Pharaoh. Do you know who Pharaoh is? He's the king of Egypt. Oh, a mighty ruler over many people. Well, Potiphar has a wonderful house, a mansion with many rooms. And crops, wheat and barley, lots of animals, cattle, donkeys, horses. Just all kinds of people taking care of his every need. And a beautiful wife. Well, they put Joseph right to work. And Joseph is faithful to God. Just like I expected Joseph to be. And he, everything he did, he worked just as he did as he did it to God. He was faithful in everything he did. And you know what? God didn't forget Joseph. He loved Joseph. Just as he loves us. How about that? And everything that Joseph touched, God blessed. It made money, or it did well. It was healthy and strong. The animals and the crops were healthy and strong and did well and grew well. And the people and the staff got along together in the house and they did well. And so Potiphar started to notice. Wow. Joseph is blessed by God. And you know what? Potiphar starts to believe in God. He's never believed in God before. That's something, isn't it? So Potiphar puts Joseph in charge of everything. Everything he owns. All of the crops, all of the animals, and all of the household. And everything. And just like before, Joseph is faithful. He does everything just as though he was doing it for God. And you know what? Yep. God blessed him for it. Everything made money. Everything was healthy and strong. Got along. Everything was well. And all that Potiphar had to do was go to work for the Pharaoh. Make him happy. <laughs> And go home and figure out what to eat for supper. The only thing that jo that Joseph couldn't do was bother Pharaoh's beautiful wife. That was fine with Joseph. That was Potiphar's wife. And he didn't want anything to do with her. Well, guess who else notices Joseph? Potiphar's wife. She liked Joseph. Now, it didn't matter to her that she was Potiphar's wife. She started saying to Joseph, Joseph, do a bad thing. Do a bad thing. 
No, Joseph would tell her and get away from her as quickly as she could. Joseph, she would say again, do a bad thing. No, Joseph would say. It's against God and it's against Potiphar. Potiphar, trust me, and I'm not going to do it. Now get away from me. And he would run away from her. She bugged him over and over and over again. Has anyone ever tried to get you to do something you know you're not supposed to do? That's terrible, isn't it? Do you know what you're supposed to do? Say no and get away from them as quickly as you can. If you can't get away from them, if you tell an adult, your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever's taking care of you, that someone's trying to get you to do the wrong thing. And they'll help you. Okay, so one day Potiphar's wife notices that she's all alone in the house with Joseph. No one else is around. And she comes up to Joseph and she says, Joseph, do the bad thing. And Joseph says, no. And he runs away as quick as quickly as he can. Oh, that makes her so mad. She just can't stand it anymore. Help, help, she says. Joseph's hurt me. He's done a bad thing to me. Well, the people come running and they hear what Potiphar's wife has to say. She lies about Joseph. She tells them that Joseph hurt her and did the bad thing to her, even though Joseph didn't do it. Poor Joseph. He did the right thing and still she lied about him. Well, she told everyone she could that Joseph had hurt her. When Potiphar got home that night, she told Potiphar, Woo-wee! Potiphar was so mad. He trusted Joseph and he believed Potiphar's wife. He didn't believe Joseph. And you know what he did? He put Joseph in prison. Hmm. Poor Joseph. Well, now at the end of our story, we find that Joseph goes from slave to prisoner. You think God will be with Joseph in that dirty, dark prison? Hmm. Will, God, will Joseph still be faithful to God in prison? Hmm. Well, we find Joseph in prison. And in prison, you still have to work. You still have jobs to do. Well, just like before, Joseph was faithful. Every little job that Joseph had to do, he did it just as though he were doing it for God. He was faithful. And you know what? God was with Joseph, even in prison. And he blessed him even in that dirty, dark prison. And then someone started to notice. The warden. You know what the warden is? The warden is the person who is in charge of all the prisons, all the other prisoners, all the guards, the way that everything's run in the prison is the warden. And you know what? That warden, the warden notices. notices that God is with Joseph. And he notices that everything that Joseph does is blessed by God. So you know what he does. He puts Joseph in charge of the entire prison. All the prisoners. All the food. Everything in the prison. And you know what happens? Yep. God blesses the whole prison. The prisoners are at peace with one another. They mind the guards. The food may have even tasted good. Who knows? But everything went well. And the prison made money. It did well because of God. Because Joseph was faithful to God. Well, that's the end of our story for today. What will happen to Joseph in prison? Will he be in prison forever? Will his dreams about being king over his brothers and his father ever come true? Will he have any more dreams? 
Hmm. Well, next week we'll come to the end of our story of Joseph. We'll see if all of those dreams come true. We'll see if God is still with Joseph. We'll see if he stays in prison forever. Now, if you like this story, hit the thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to my channel, will you hit the little bell and subscribe? If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I'm so glad to have you as my subscriber. I love you. Bye.